Welcome to the Flights of the Round Table Podcast. Broadcasting from the Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina. And now, here are your hosts, Dan, Drew, Daniel, and Florian. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is episode 44 of the Flights of the Round Table Podcast. And we're going to kick this bad boy off like David Tepper should kick Matt Rule and Baker Mayfield to the fucking curb. How is everyone doing today? I am doing not so good because of the Panthers. I'm not liking it. I wish I wish they're doing better. I'm doing much better than the Panthers. <laughs> Which is? <laughs> well, I mean... It's not setting the bar very high, so even if I had a shit day, it's still better than the Panthers. But I had a good day. That's good, man. Yeah. You guys want to hear? A f- you want to hear a funny joke? Yeah. Let's hear it. So Kenny Galladay is making twenty million dollars a year. He makes close to a little over a million dollars every game. Every person at this table, the last three weeks, has the same amount of receptions. In yards <laughs> as Kenny Galladay has <laughs> zero, wow. zero. I mean, you got like, dude, you're an NFL receiver getting paid that much. You, you gotta just, you gotta be ashamed of yourself. You yeah. know, you gotta be better. Yeah, and uh, that's pretty bad. And we'll definitely get into some football, like we always do on the flights of the round table. And if you haven't already, follow us at F O T R T podcast. <laughs> but I think we have. <laughs> Do you want to chime in? I was going to say on Twitter, bit? on Instagram, on uh, wherever you get your podcast. Do we have a MySpace? <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine yeah. like a little Tumblr action? Tom from MySpace approved. You could probably find us anywhere. Just you probably could. Think you about just it. Just Google and you'll find the flights of the round table. Imagine but we have a Reddit chat or a, a Reddit page. or It might be on your... <laughs> yeah. Do you guys <laughs> remember the Family Guy where he talked about what grinds my gears? He had the, yes. the little segment. I love that. I love so that. I want to pose this to you guys. It's which of these annoys you the most? When you're driving in the fast lane behind a slow-ass person uh-huh. or when you get to self-checkout and there's somebody with a full grocery cart? Hmm. Uh, can we Can we define some criteria? How many items do they have? An entire and full cart. Like, it is stacked to the top to from the, top. the bottom okay. with groceries. That's pretty bad. And then how slow is the person going on the highway? So the think lifetime? it's a... S- okay, so we'll, we'll use 85 or 77, for example. Okay. It's 60. They are going 50 in the fast lane. Mm. Ooh. That's ridiculous. That's really... A, that's a hard that's one. That's the one that gets me... That, that's the worst. But why? Because I'm usually always in a hurry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't have time to fucking waste. Whereas when I'm in the grocery store, gr- grocery store. Oh, I like a grocery <laughs> store. <laughs> grocery store. Just picking co- coconuts out of the tree. Uh, yeah. The grocery I, store. Uh, I, I, I have a plan to go to the grocery store, right? Yeah. So I'm never in really in a hurry. And that's why it doesn't bother me. Plus, there's all, there's at least depends on the the store, obviously, but there's like three or four other kiosks you can use, right? But so what if there's only one? Think about it like well, that. Well, I'm not shopping there, <laughs> so that's not my problem. <laughs> Can you imagine? But it's my pick is traffic. Yep. Your pick's traffic. I, I'm gonna go with traffic too, because if I can just leave the grocery store, if I'm in that much of a hurry, like yeah, you can get, get another day. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So Daniel's the reason why you see the gallon of milk with the candy bars at the front. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it, yeah, usually it's like some Oreos with it or, well, or some ice. I tell you cream what. Next time I see that at the store, I'm gonna be like, hmm, Daniel was here. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I see that, I'm always like, you're kind of lazy. Whoever did that. <laughs> or it's like so, somebody could, definitely could made a choice. Somebody yeah. th- th- decisions were made here. Well, I I saw a picture of one where it's like a gallon of milk, but in the beer aisle. <laughs> so I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Decisions were made. <laughs> yeah. For everyone out there who does that, I hope once you leave the grocery store, you get behind somebody slow in the highway. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay, right. that's the enough. karma. You're right. Yeah. What about you? Uh, I don't know. For me, I, I guess I have to agree with Florian because you know when I am driving, like it's because I'm going somewhere, right? Yeah. And I usually leave to get there at a specific time. And so when that person is there, they're prohibiting me from getting there at the specific time. So. Yeah. I always try to skirt right, skirt left. I want to throw a third option and perhaps that... Oh, you haven't gone yet, actually. Sorry. For me, the most annoying thing, and it doesn't just annoy me, it annoys the workers at grocery stores, is people that go to self-checkout with a full fucking grocery cart of stuff. It is meant for 10 items. Or less. And you have Grandma Ethel there 
fucking going at a glacial speed scanning <laughs> items. And of course, they always, like every fifth item, they get the red, uh, like blinking light, and somebody has to come yeah. up. I just don't know why this is scanning. The w- worker's going, oh, it's one of those days today, huh? <laughs> like, I just, for me, I, I can't do it. it. It's the most frustrating thing for me is when people do that in grocery stores. Yeah. Like, go to a fucking checkout line. Like, during COVID, it was infuriating, but that people would do that. Yeah, because they didn't even have all of them open either. So, like, it was less people getting through. And I also think the worst is, too, like, when you have produce. Like, if you have produce, automatically eliminates you from contention in the line, right? Mm. Pulling it out, typing the w- how many content you have in. <laughs> mm. Yeah, like, I don't that's like not, that. That's, that's not a, speedy checkout. That's fucked up, you know? But grocery stores should do a better job of that with their produce. Make it easier as opposed to having to put the thing on. you got to find the picture, put in the quantity. It gets the weight and everything. Just make it easier for the guys, you yeah. know? They need to have a bouncer for the f- self-checkout line. <laughs> yeah. What were you going to say? Um, so this is a scenario that happens to me, at, um, not here, but um, uh, at my folks' house. It always pissed me off. Um, when I go into the house through the garage, and then the door in the garage to get into the house is locked. Because I always have shit in my hands. Mm-hmm. And when I have to get my fucking key, I get like an irrational rage. I get fucking angry that like I have to stop for a second. I have to take a deep breath. And I have to calm the fuck down. I usually wait like a minute or two before I actually go in the house. Because I'm ready to smack everyone in there. I will <laughs> front hand, back hand people. That pisses me off. Oh, God, I hate it. Because I always have something in my hand. So, like, I have to, like, fucking hold. And I don't do two trips from the car to the house. I do everything right, in one that, trip. That's a goal of, like, anyone that's, like, yeah. you know, wants to get shit done efficiently. It's like, yeah. get everything, one trip. Yeah. It's a manly uh, thing right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I fucking hate that. Like, that pisses me off. Like, yeah. why? Let the car- garage is closed. Why is that closed? Why is that locked? Come on now. Extra security. Nah. <laughs> nah, Just, we risk it. it. Drew, so I think, you know, you guys live together now. Whenever you see Florian coming back from the grocery store, make sure you lock all the doors so that he has to get his keys out. <laughs> Both top uh, and bottom on the garage door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I won't even wait a minute. I'm going full front hand back end in there. You better not <laughs> yeah. be in there because I'm going to pop, okay. pop. <laughs> Let's not do that, actually, because I usually do come through the garage when I get home. Yeah. I hit the opener and walk in. So, yeah. Aaron? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, front hand back end. I want to end up moving on here, but the one thing I saw, have you guys seen that TikTok where somebody is trying to get like in their house and they open one lock and the person closes the other one? It's like a simultaneous no. thing. So you have the top lock and the bot, like the, the thing. So anytime they open the top lock, they close the top lock back up. So anytime they open the bottom lock, they can't get in. It that's is a, that's hilarious. That's a good prank. <laughs> I would be so oh, pissed. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know what to, to do. Uh, excuse me. I almost had a burp hiccup there. <laughs> Anyhow, though, uh, before we move on, disclaimer, we decided to use some different chairs today. I hear them squeaking like a mug. I hope you cannot hear them, but if you do, we'll try to sit still as much as we can <laughs> yeah. because they are kind of squeaky right and, now. And I'd like to point out, I didn't change things up. I'm still on the couch. I'm happy with my decision. Yeah, you, yeah. you made a good decision, especially for the ears. I know. Today, yeah. I'm jealous. Yeah. Jealous like a bald head. So uh, <laughs> moving on here, we got some news and pop culture slash football, a little combo. Um, America's top couple, one of them at least. Uh, what's yeah. in the news today, Dan? So it, it sounds like I, I saw today on multiple social media platforms, Daniel brought it up too, that Tom Brady and Giselle Buchanan, I think that's how you say her last name, potentially. B- Buchanan? No, nah, I think well, I might have said We're going to just call her. We're going to call her Giselle. Uh, B. Yeah, it's like Shaq. You know, you don't call him Shaquille Thompson. Shaq. Giselle. I thought it was Shaquille O'Neal. O'Neal. <laughs> Yeah, what? <laughs> I was about to say, okay. what? What? Thompson? What? <laughs> Who? Who's Shaquille Tom- Thompson? Jack Who is Thompson? that? The linebacker for the fucking yeah. Panthers. Yeah. Oh, but that's not the Shaq we think of. No, no, it's not. I liked it. Did you do it on purpose or did you fuck up? Be honest. We're going to continue the news. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good. Good. Um, Tell us news. But Brady and Giselle uh, hired divorce lawyers. I think everybody has seen, you know, they've been going through stuff ever since Brady decided to, well, supposedly ever since Brady decided to come back to football. So I brought it up to you guys and I saw it today. Did Brady retire to potentially repair his marriage, but then realized that it was too far gone and decided to come back and play ball. I, you know what? I think so. I, I really think so. I mean, don't if you put two and two together, at least it makes sense. 
a little bit right now. I mean, everyone's probably thinking it, right? It's not just me. It's all of us. <laughs> I can it? tell you that. So this is like a spiteful yeah. season. You it's know? really not like, just me. The season's kind of so uh, like your theory is this is kind of like a fuck you football season to his wife. Mm-hmm. So because I never I, I, I don't really but follow pop culture <laughs> like that. Right. I'm not invested in their marriage. I could give three fucks, to be honest. But um, because I never heard anything about them having troubles. Right. They're like America's fucking couple. Like everyone or, or um, not, I don't know. But I never heard of anything. I only heard good things about their marriage. Hell, they did that documentary, but which <laughs> was like kissing his kids on the lips. <laughs> it's a little weird. But anyway, it looked like they were um, having a good marriage. And that was only like three years ago when that aired or two years ago. I guess a lot can change in two years. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I didn't see that coming at all. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I don't know. You say like, or we say he come back, oh, win a Super Bowl, but. You know, the Buccaneers don't even look that good this year. They don't. Tom mm-hmm. Brady, I feel like it's a different attitude. Defense? Like, like a, it's almost like when Peter Griffin in the Spider-Man movie got, like, the the black coat and the hairdo. And Peter like, Griffin? Bully Peter Griffin. Parker? Yeah, I get, like, that type of vibe. Not to that extreme, but with Tom Brady this season. I kind of like how he's <laughs> acting, actually. No, I kind of like he's, a, he's acting Parker. a little more angry. You said Griffin. I said Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were on one today with these wow, names, man. bro. I'm like, I'm thinking, like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> Can I you did. imagine, like, Spider Man going through go- through Griffin. New York City, like, <laughs> 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 that would be fucking good, huh? Golly, man. Hilarious, Drew. That's good. <laughs> You're painting pictures in my head, like, <laughs> like fucking Picasso. <laughs> Your eyes lit up, and I was like, what did I say? <laughs> yeah. That's good, but sorry, go ahead. But yeah, I think he has a, to me, he has a different persona, a different meaner, demeanor different. this year, and it has nothing to do with sports, right? He's calculated that battle his whole life. I definitely think it's affecting him. The other thing I will note, too, is last season and multiple seasons before, after they win, he would always post like a video with just the caption W when they would win. I haven't seen any of those this year, and I think the Bucks have won, what, two games? So you just you wonder kind of where his headspace at. I do agree. That team, they have an their defense is good, but the offense just seems hindered outside of Mike Evans with injuries. And Brady is starting to get hit and hit because that offensive line is very, very subpar since they lost guys. So I mean, you just wonder, and I think just Giselle did come out and say, you know, uh, she wants him at home more and he wants to keep playing ball that's his passion you know and she probably was like well you know i want a husband who's going to be home you've been doing this for 20 years so who, you know I, I don't know i don't know what's going on there maybe you know maybe it's bullshit that they hired divorce lawyers but i did see that today from multiple media it's interesting outlets. brady seems like the guy that would take this though and like have it fuel him for the rest of the season i'm like this could be a year where he wins the super bowl just because of like he has that extra motivation to make it worth it right because what if it's the opposite of what you guys are saying? You know, what if it's like what well, probably a lot of other people think, right? They're getting divorced because he's playing another year when he said he was going to retire, right? Because he did retire and then unretire, which I think is a bullshit reason to get divorced, to be honest, but whatever. Um, but don't you think, like, if she divorced him because of that, that he would use this as motivation? Because it's not even worth yeah. – this season's not worth it if he doesn't win a Super Bowl. I don't think it's going to be instant. What? Because, like, what's the motivation? I, if anything, you're going to be a little depressed. You just got divorced. I feel like the, where that would happen would be the following season, right? You know, Fair. life's not good. Got my mind straight now. Boom, bop, bam. Did he say he was playing one more year officially, or is that – it's not been I think determined. I think he's taking it year by year. Yeah. But I did see, I think a couple, maybe a week or two ago, I did see Rap say something about there's definitely a bigger possibility he retires this year than as an analyst uh, with Fox. So he has, like, a job already lined up. That's right. Up. I remember he had that contract, yeah. So. But Brady is the GOAT. We all agree with that. You agree with that, Daniel? Yes. We'll see yes. what happens. Go, um, go, yeah. go. Switching to another NFL news story, all of us have been, you know, it's been a topic of discussion. We've all said it needs to happen. Kenny Pickett finally named the starter of the Steelers, which I understand the numbers were not good Sunday. I got it. He had three picks. I think he had two rushing <sighs> touchdowns. But I have to say, two of those picks were Claypool. they, sh- they Claypool. should not have been picks. That so, effort by Claypool on that one interception was disgusting. Um, so I mean, you just I'm, I'm hoping that maybe I'm not saying they're going to win the Super Bowl or anything, 
but maybe this kind of puts the Steelers back in the right direction. They're getting that spark. They're getting that juice. You know, you want to be able to rally around the guy that you drafted in the first round. I mean, I think uh, George Pickens is heavily going to, you know, he had a, oh, his first 100-yard game. Yeah, he's unbelievable. He's oh, he's unbelievable. He's a dog. Yeah. He's a dog. So, you know, just want to get thoughts. You know, did they make the right decision? Should they give Trubisky a couple more weeks, or was it the right time? Mm. I'm going to say it was the right time, and I was, like, the big proponent of, of – like, I liked the signing of Trubisky preseason. I liked it a lot. I think he got a bad rap because he was a, a more than capable backup for the Buffalo Bills and, he, you know, the games that he did play for them. He We were like, wow, maybe it was just Chicago because we knew the coach was shit. We knew the GM was shit. The offensive line was in shambles. It still is, and they got everything brand new, right? So I was thinking ah, it was just Chicago. So with Pittsburgh, more competent organization, I think you should be fine. Ugh, it hasn't looked good. Um, I don't. I I really don't know where I stand on Trubisky. I think they made the right move with Pickett, even now. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You weren't winning games with Trubisky. You didn't even look good doing the one game you did win. So, yeah. I mean, I think this is past due. Yeah, he threw three picks. I don't like that, and I think we're going to see a lot more turnovers for him. Um, Excellent. Like Dan said, they're not going to win the Super Bowl, but it's definitely a better decision for the long-term future of the Pittsburgh Play, Steelers. Playoffs or no? No. no. I had him as my seventh seed, but yeah. it's looking like a bad pick. I yeah. think this will be Mike uh, Mike Tomlin's first losing season this year. Oh. I think so. And you know, and, and uh, you know, it's unfortunate, but and I don't think he's on the hot seat or anything. There's no, there's no way. No, no way. way. But. I think it's going to be the first losing season, unfortunately. But it, it, it's growing pains with a rook that's coming from a college where the I will say the competition that he would play was not other the than best Cle- thing in the world. Other than Clemson, no one. Yeah, it was, it was middle tier. Middle tier. Like you know, it wasn't SEC, but it wasn't like Mountain West, like BYU and Zach Wilson and stuff. So, yeah. Daniel, thoughts on Kenny Pickett? Anything, or did we kind of do a good job in compassing it? No, I think you. I, I I need to see another game before I can really say too much more. You know, he he he. I mean, he had two yeah two rushing touchdowns, right? Yeah. Um, he ran the ball decent. Yeah, it's gonna give him a little motivation. But what, they're playing the Bills this week. Yeah, Jesus. they're about to get ran. If you're on. on Kenny Pickett if into a Kenneth, gauntlet. Yeah, they put Ken, they put, honestly. This is the one week I, I would not have put. I would have waited until after this game to put him in, yeah. just because I mean. That's a buzz saw. Hey, but you know what? Vegas. If he can, if he bi- if he if he uh, wins this game against the Bills, wow! Yeah. I mean, he'll I mean he'll put a name out there like no other. I mean that that'll just put the him on the map. You know, I, incredible I, upset. Yeah. Wow, dude! Right? It's it's one of those games that like some rook will go in and beat them. You know what I mean? Like it's one of those because of football. Is just what I'm saying. I want to move because I know you have something to bring up. Want to know what I'm tired of? Every what? single night, and on Saturdays during college football, Aaron Judge, hit the gosh darn home run. Just hit it, break the record, so I stop getting notifications about it. Yeah, it is, is annoying. incredibly annoying. You're cutting into football time. Just hit the home run Aaron, and be done wait, with it. Aaron Judge? If Aaron Judge hits one more home run, he breaks the Yankees' Roger Maris' record for single-season home runs. And it is every – like, like I got a notification. Watch Aaron Judge at bats live on MLB TV. Well, like, uh, stop th- sending me that. The reason why I think it's getting a little blown out of proportion, too, is a lot of people will take this is – the most clean home runs ever hit, right? Everyone yeah. knows in some capacity, Mark Wire, Sosa, Bonds were taking steroids. I mean, uh, in some capacity, they were 100%. Judge is 100% clean. He's clean. 100%. So, so it says a lot. It says Do a we lot. know that 100%? I don't, I can, I Dude, can, these guys, I believe it. This guy was born huge. These guys are getting tested for yeah, freaking test. protein. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing those tests aren't picking up. They're clean. I have to be. But with that said, I disagree with that Hit statement the home right there because I, I yeah. think that there's a way that you can get around it. There's always a way. But sure, I believe that he is clean. As of right now, we have no reason to think he's juicing. So, look, this is in the 1940s. We're not going to get drafted into the military, but we are going to do a draft right now. Oh. Yeah, baby. Good segue. Mm. Mm. Oh, Throw it in there, sir. Yeah, a little algae baji. So last week we drafted uh, fast food. Restaurants, right? We went down like a snake draft. Turns picking. 
Um, we had some good ones. So this week we're gonna do hip hop rappers. We're gonna do hip hop artists. Okay. So mm-hmm. then, how how are we determining order here? Order real quick. West one out of one. Rock paper scissors. You go. We go. Winners face. Losers face. Ready Wait. set. Rock. Pa- rock paper scissors shoot. Rock paper scissors shoot. Oh my god. Rock paper you scissors shoot. I know. Okay. Uh. Oh, no, you won. You won. No, I know. Two out of three. One out of one. Oh, then oh. he won. Okay, then okay. Yeah. All right, for first pick. No, for no, it's I won. You won. Oh, you won? First pick, second Daniel pick. Daniel gets first pick. Third and fourth right cool. here. Third, Third pick. Okay. All right, Daniel. Cool. So we're doing our first, then our seconds, and are we doing the five, four? What are we uh, doing? Let's go. You want to go three? Yeah, well, top three. Only four Let's of do three. Us? Top three. Okay. Now, like all, all time or right now? Is it all rap time. and hip hop, right? Is yeah, it rap same and thing. Hip-hop? Okay, same let's thing. just make that clear. All okay. time? All time. All time. Okay. Okay. Drake. Okay. That's a solid. Drake, Drake the number that's one. That's a solid, seat. like, yeah. That's a solid one. All time okay. favorite rapper or hip hop artist? Drake. Yeah, it uh-huh. is. All right, if we're going all time, I got to go Eminem with the two spot. Good. That's a good one. Ooh. Uh, In a table of four white guys, someone was going to say Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's good. You know? I was thinking him as my Love number one. Eminem. Love Eminem. Uh, number three seed, Tupac. Love, you know. I, oh, uh, I, I wait, did with, you say are we doing one seeds first or yeah, three seeds? One, well, it's just like a draft. Yeah, like, like, like so, so for me, like my, my, my pick is, I'm telling you, I live, my roommates blasted that. And that music is great. Tupac's great, man. Tupac. So he's your number one of all time. Yes. We're, like the fast food restaurant. Yeah, we're just, we're just I'm drafting. sorry. I just want to be clear because this is this is more high stakes You're than, this uh, really yeah, fucking yeah. than fast food. Hey, this was Lil Wayne. Oh, yeah. So money. for the period he was on, he was fucking on. All right, Florian, you get the first pick in the second round too since you were last in um, the I'm going to say Eminem number two. Wow. No, I already Eminem, Eminem's Eminem. already picked. Can't, can't oh, I can't even guy. do that. Wow, then that. I'm... <laughs> uh, fucking! I'm gonna say Biggie then. Sure, that's yeah. great. I like that. Um, I love this guy's music. Uh, you know, because he's much, much. He puts out different types of beats and vibes and stuff. J Cole. I think J Cole makes great <sighs> music. Personally, I was gonna go with him, but I will have to pick Nas next. If you guys haven't gotten into Nas, you gotta check out Nas. Okay. His his old stuff is so good. I mean, there, there's still artists today that steal his beats. Um, you know, Ju- uh, Lucid Dreams by yeah. Juice World. That yes. was Nas beat. So interesting. I like that. I like that. I'm gonna go Jay Z. Ooh, I mean, Hova. I'm not gonna lie. I never like Jay Z's music. I I, I I respect the fuck out of Jay Z, yeah. but I never liked this music. I don't I'll, know why. I'll echo that. There's a couple songs. I that, like yeah, a I few know. of them. His songs actually. Yeah. So, yeah. My yeah, favorite one was where he was that. a feature, and it was with Linkin Park. It was encore. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how that much. Was, that was that's how yeah. like little Dirt I like Jay Z. But I understand a, he is. That was a good he, album. He's Hova, you know. Yeah. That, that was one of the best collab albums of all time. Yeah. All right, Daniel. First pick of the third round. Wow. Oh man. That's tough. Might as well go four rounds here. Yeah, okay. Make it all the way around. Okay. For another pick here, I'm gonna go. Oh, you already said that though. Ooh. Come on, brother. Mm-hmm. Daniel, I know what you mm-hmm. listen to. This should mm-hmm. not be that difficult. Just anybody I'm gonna, you like. I'm going to do Russ. You know? <laughs> well, Russ? Sleeper know. pick. Sleeper pick. I mean, I was fucking napping. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go with an artist that has one of my favorite top five rap albums of all time. Good Kid, Mad City, Mr. K-Dot. Damn it. Damn Kendrick it. Kendrick Lamar. Damn Hell it. Hell yeah. That's uh, a great pick. So, okay. All right. Hold on. Real quick. Aaron Judge hit his home run. So okay. we're done with that. So we're done with that. <laughs> um, probably the best free, one of the best freestyles I've ever heard. I'm going to go Lil Dicky. Lil Dicky. <laughs> I like that. For, I, you know, I like people think it's a comical pick. I, I mean, he's got bars, honestly. He does have bars. Fucking. He does. There's so many. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Mmm. I I have one, but it's like I'm going back to back, yeah, and I going, hate you for going back adding a back. fourth. And this is where it gets difficult. Um, give me like five, like ten seconds. I really nope. need ten you seconds. Now. You need to pull out. You need to pull out Spotify. <laughs> Dan, can you not do the do 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 do? Rick Ross. <laughs> no. Okay, I got my two. All right. Okay, in the third spot, 
I I mean, I like some of his music, uh, but most of it I don't like. But I think he's just an influential hip hop artist. It's got to be Kanye West. Oh, that's a great Facts. one. That's a great one. Okay. And then fourth, um, <laughs> do I think he's the GOAT? No. Um, or like top four. But I'm under pressure for one. And he's got one of the most iconic catchphrases ever. It's got to be E-40. <laughs> 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 no, there's a, Dude, like, E-40 yeah. made some great bangers, he though. Did. He really did. He was on one for a period of time. There's he a really lot was. of people that like he was his inspiration yeah, to in the West Coast. Yeah, West Coast, Bay Area. So E-40. E-40. Philly guy, dreams and nightmares. Oh, Meek, Meek Mill. Mill. Dude, Meek Mill pisses me off. I can't stand him. <laughs> just, Florian, just hold up. Wait a minute. It's my uh. turn. Uh, I got, I'm trying to decide between a few here. I'm going to go Logic. Logic's been very okay. consistent for eight years. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to go with my one of my favorite rappers, Future. Future. Uh, hey, I'm not going to lie. That, that's, <sighs> that's a good one. I had to. Th- just I had for bangers. He has, like, he he has the bangers. same beat. Every song, yeah, they like yeah. could say that about a lot of rappers. Though. You can. You I'm can. not gonna lie. The one song that of his that I think is a great party song and it gives anyone hype is "Same Damn Time." That shit is so fire. Yeah, that, such a good song. That and then uh, honestly, his whole album with Drake is Dr- the Drake Future album. Oh, the Diamonds Dancing album, amazing. That it's is. one of the best al- albums ever. Yeah, we could go on and on about hip hop, guys. If you have our numbers, text us. Who do we miss? Who is the best artist we did not include there? Who did we show disrespect to? I know we're gonna get some hate. I want to hear it. Text us, seriously. I know it's gonna happen. So come on. So and I think and I, and I think I won that for sure. Kendrick Lamar, Eminem. I you did with those two. The other two were kind of they were Logic, very hit and Nas. Nas. Oh, no. Nice. Okay, Nas is not. A, wow, you definitely hit. Yeah, yeah you I think you won. won. Um, yeah, you the uh, I forgot about Nas. Sorry. We'll, we'll have to, <laughs> we'll have to do another bracket next week. Yeah, we'll have I, to figure out kind of what we want. So, folks, if you have a topic or anything that you think we should do a snake draft for, give us a comment. You know, shoot us a shoot us a text. We we'd love to hear it there. Yeah, don't shoot us. Just shoot us a text. Yeah, please, please. Please don't shoot us. Um, so I do want to transition here uh, into something more of a serious topic, and I think it needs to be brought up just because with how badly it was handled. Mm-hmm. But if you watch football, uh, you saw what happened with Tua uh, Tagovailoa on Thursday Night Football. You know, got hit, went into the fence, you know, whatever it's called, the fencing pose had to be carted off and you know he's at least out for this week and there's some doctors that think he should never play football ever again that's you've seen that uh doctors uh boomer Esiason tweeted something that Tua might just stop in general playing football again because he doesn't want to get hurt like that again because and rightfully so, so no honestly if he does that power to him you sue the dolphins organization for everything if that's the case, because of how badly they mismanaged that. I'm sorry, Floyd. They mismanaged that entire situation. The fact that they had to fire, they had to fire the doctor mm-hmm. who an independent screwed, doctor. who screwed up the analysis of his head. Like, dude, don't tell me it's a back injury. They yeah. they hired that independent doctor. Okay? Well, the the NFL did. It's not hired by the Dolphins. It's because the, well, then he wouldn't be independent. It's, he, it's he, a it's a doctor hired by the NFL. So a third party doctor. I haven't heard like the facts on what went wrong during the analysis. So I don't want to misspeak, but I would like to understand that. Because a reason why he could have got fired too is just a scapegoat, right? It's easy to point that finger. So I would like to hear those facts. Now, the team doctor's job is to get anybody on the field, right? Let's say Tua like st- like technically was able to get back on the field for test, but realistically wasn't. But technically he was. So the doctor's job is to get the players on the field for the healthy. So what I'm saying is there needs to be a third party, like from the NFL that, or the NFL PA. That is that's that was the doctor. That was the team's doctor. No, th- the team's doctor didn't get fired. The independent doctor independent got fired. Doctor, it right. was the independent yes. team doctor. Okay. Yeah, the third party. Got fired. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Does he miss specific tests? Okay, so what did the team doctor say? I don't know. That I... hasn't come out or anything. So why isn't he getting fired? I don't know. Because the, the Dolphins to that are like, shut the so, fuck so up. So the N- <laughs> like you said, the scapegoat. Well, I, I read the this the wrong though. way. So the NFL fired their own 
Yes. Independent doctor, but yes. the Dolphins doctor gets off scotch too. I have that's I've, fishy, man. I haven't heard that's fishy. Ha, no pun intended. Yeah. But I'm gonna um, eat some mahi mahi. But yeah, no, but that's what I'm dolphin. saying. <laughs> yeah. They would call him the fish, even though it's a mammal. But anyway, um <laughs> fucking yeah, the independent doctor is the one that got fired. But like you said, a scapegoat. Who was Why, the guy? Yeah. Why didn't the team doctor get fired? I haven't heard anything about the team doctor at all. I don't know if he's still employed. I don't know if he got fired. I don't I know need shit to call about him up the right now. They're doing a thorough. Uh, I saw the I NFLPA know. and the NFL are doing a, like yeah, a they thorough interv- investigation. They interviewed Tua today. The NFLPA, the no investigators. Way. Yeah. What they say? What did he say? I don't. I haven't checked my phone. I don't know. We need to know. What is Dr- the- I I see your point about what you said in regards to the doc. It, it's the doctor, you know, he wants to get players back out on the field. But I have seen like Bill Belichick, Mike Tomlin, John Harbaugh have come out and said, if they like, if they see a player like how Tua got, Tua got that Sunday, he got up, clearly stumbled over, and it was not a back injury. Right? Don't, don't bullshit me. Yeah, that you was. You take yeah. you take his helmet regardless of what the doctor says, and you keep him out of the game for his long term health. And the giant, or excuse me. The Dolphins completely neglected that, and that goes into Mike McDaniel's comments after the game on Thursday, saying it's just a concussion. Yeah, what I what really sucks, um, and I, I want to like preface this like it, I'm I'm saying it sucks obviously as a fan, but it's it's more than that, right? So like I, I'm only saying this from a fan's perspective, but um, it's just you know like what I'm saying is like that's not. Whatever. I don't know what I'm fucking trying what to say. What are you trying to say? Cut to the chase. Um, Mike McDaniel going onto the podium and saying all the things he said about he um, takes his players' health seriously. He, um, you know, he would never put a player of his in jeopardy like that. As much as I would love to believe him, that's fucking bullshit. I, I disagree. Just like Bill <sighs> Belichick got I'm all the questions about Mac Jones' ankle and said, I'm not a team doctor. I'm not a team doctor. If I am the head coach of a team, I am word for word taking but what it's the a doctor diff- says. But it's I am a not making scenario, the judgment call. I am putting it all on him. You saw him stumble yeah. because he got a concussion. Like that, there's no hiding that. Like you can say it's an ankle or back, but that's clearly a concussion. Like that guy was, he was, he pretty much folded onto the ground. He had two of his linemen help him up, up, and then to the sideline. Yeah, it's a, it's a totally different scenario. And then. And you you have to. I mean, I don't know this for a fact, sure, but I would assume that the team doctor would consult with the coach about that about their decision to put him into the game as well. I, it's not like it, the Mike Big Daniel is going to be surprised. It's not like he's just chilling on the sideline. He looks up. Oh, two is back in the game. He knew. He's talking to the doctor. Right. So um, the doctor uh, should have would have told him if he can or cannot go into the game. Right. It, and that's fair. But like, just the eye test tells you like. Don't you think, like, you saw him stumble, even if the doctor says no? I mean, fucking the doctor for the Chargers stepped Tyrod Taylor in the lung. So, I don't, the doctor's not always right. I can tell you one thing. Justin Herbert's number one fan. Yeah, so I'm just telling you one thing, right? (laughs) So, I would, it's the eye test. And then to say he went up on stage and then said Tua did injure his back and his ankle. Come on, man. Why even say that? Like, now you're digging yourself a bigger hole. And I'm the biggest Mike McDaniel fan. What he's done in three fucking games for us is the best three games I've ever seen as a Dolphins fan. You're probably going to win. Post Marino, okay? So, like, I would support him over anyone, but uh, it's not good. It's It's not not a good look. They got to set precedent. I'm sorry. Like, if they're doing this investigation, something – and I, I, I hope it's not like super like they have to do s- whether it's finding the Dolphins organization or oh, firing. They're the gonna team get doctor. sued like a mother. Dude. I don't know <laughs> if it's gonna be suing, but they need to do something. I agree. Dolphins team doctor needs to go. I mean, I am a hundred percent putting that on him. Like, sure, y- yes, McDaniel could have used his own judgment, but it's a business. You have to go with the guy who you hired to give you the edu- like, like the hand of the king, right? You have to use his Well, Game of Thrones opinion. plug, House of Dragon. So, you know, I, I think McDaniel, yeah, sure. He could have stepped up and maybe laid the law. He could have, but he would not have put them out there if the doctor didn't give him the information to make him confident to do it. And that's, that's my take. I would agree. You know, I, I'm eager to see kind of, well, not, eager is probably not the right word, but I'm interested to see kind of what comes from this investigation and maybe what kind of precedent they put in place going forward with other teams, because I'm sure this ain't the first time this has happened. Why don't you say, though, 
Speaking of the Dolphins, do they have the best backup quarterback in the league? Oh. We'll find out. I, I don't even Ooh. know that, to be honest, Dan. And, you know, me, the, <laughs> I have I'm a, a big Matt Moore I have fan. A, I have a text from you saying best backup in the league. I don't want to hear that. They might. I know, but that was half joking. I mean, you can't tell tone from text. I don't know who's so. better, Mitchell Trubisky or <laughs> – <laughs> I moved on real quick. Mitchell Trubisky or Teddy Bridgewater? Would you say that – uh, Teddy Bridgewater and Tua Tagovailoa are the same exact quarterback, just one's right hand and one's left hand. No, they not throw, at all. They both throw short passes. Uh, I no. So there, it's a little bit different. Tua's uh, release, especially so far in Mike McDaniel's offense, I think he has um, the quickest. Uh, I think he's top three or top two in terms of getting the ball out of his hand. I mean, he catches the ball and it's gone because he's got Tyreek or Jalen Waddle to throw to. The release is like that. It's it's out of there. Speaking of Tyreek, the reporter asked him a question about like, oh, do you feel any different about Tyreek throwing to you? And he's like, no, you could throw to me. I'll still bank yardage. <laughs> Did he really? Yeah, say? or something like that. They they also asked him, why are you here instead of the Jets? He goes, state taxes. <laughs> I was about to say that, actually. That's, good on, huh? That's hilarious. Well, speaking of dolphins, dolphins are fish. Um, some pretty big news in the sporting world, according to fish. Daniel, why don't you walk us through what's going on? What in the happened fishing? in the pro bass competition Ooh, this week? That was yes. pretty. So pretty there was a uh, there was a pro bass competition this uh, past weekend, and uh, they uh, I'll walk you through. So you you they do they do a bass they catch bass they take them to the the way the way station at the end of the day or the end of the tournament weigh all the fish, and uh, they they chew like whoever has the most weight wins. Well, the guy that's been winning for the past like five to 10, 20 years, whatever, long period of time, he's won hundreds of thousands of dollars, boats, all many things, had been stuffing the fish with weights and to win. And I mean, that is just cheating. Uh, I mean, that is just plain old cheating. So to essentially, he was putting heavy ass shit on the, the bait that the fish was eating. Y- yeah. So the, the, the weights that they're, they're, they're metal, they're just solid metal to sink to the bottom. They're sinkers. And either he was cutting a, a tiny hole and putting them in the fish, or he was making the fish swallow them. I would assume he was doing that. Um, and then. Someone was who was like, I don't think this is like you know the yeah. right correct way. I <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Slid him open, all this like Mass. stuff. Fell, yeah, can fell you out. imagine a little bass like that? And it's like that's a thirty pound bass. What the fuck? <laughs> See the, the thing I, I want feel like nope. something's off here. It's the dense thing, as hell. The right, thing I need I you to do a little TLC over there. Oh dear. Oh, I'm sorry. The thing I wonder though. So those bass competitions mm-hmm. are, they are pretty filmed when they're out there. You know what I mean? Are they? They are. I've seen, like, stuff on TV where they're out bass fishing, and there are cameras on the boat. So, like, I wonder, when did they have time to do this where the camera was not on it? Because if you put it on your reel while you're casting out, the camera would be like, zoom in on it. Or if you bring them in and you cut a little hole, unless you have them, like, you know how you grab the fish out of the water, like, by its, like, you know, mouth. Mm-hmm. Unless you had it ready to go, and you just click a little button and it drops it you in. You thumb, you like thumb push. This, away this is it. let me. This is a way. This is a crazy way. I have seen because um, I am a fisherman. I do follow these channels. Uh, a fisherman, but uh, they do. They have these fish traps, and basically, it is a little cage where they have caught the, a few like a week before the tournament. They went and got and caught these fish, and. Um, They'll have, they're just based on, they have a little remote control, and they can, once they push the open button, you know, the, the, the fish will go out. The fish will come out, and, you know. So they, they already put the weights in them? Yeah. Well, and then it's they possible. have, and then they, when they push the button, it comes up, and they just have their hands right there taking the fish right into from that thing in the water, right into their boat. They don't even, you know, they're just putting their hand wow. into that crate, taking them right out of the water, because, oh, no. I mean, the crate's under the water. But they're, I mean, they're not coming usually straight up, you know. Right. These fish, they just put their hand right down into it, and grab the fish, and put it right in their boat. Hmm. Yeah. Sounds like something else, but. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's very cheating, and uh, I've only seen it a few times. They've won hundreds of thousands of dollars, too, bro. I mean, they could realistically go to jail. Uh, I know. I, and saw people, the, I, no, I, I yeah. saw something that they were like, those people could face jail time. Yeah. No, I agree. When you're taking that much money from people, and uh, 
And I don't really know if the if it holds up. If it can hold up in court, but I mean, those people that are mad at him, I bet you if someone goes after him, I bet you that judge is going to be like, hmm. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I feel like, yeah, I don't know. You'd have to have the better lawyer in the room. You know what I mean? Like, oh, 100%. 100%. To make that fly. You, you, I, ha- you have to have this. I'm problem. hiring the team that won it for Johnny Depp. That's the team I'm <laughs> You just want to get with the, the female. Camilla? Yeah. yeah. Yes, I do. Before we get into picks, because we got to do our pick Florian, what are we drinking on this week? Oh, what are we drinking on this week? Heavy on the IPAs. I mean, I they're, they're so heavy, I could bench these and build significant muscle mass. <laughs> you, <laughs> might, you might have a lead weight stuffed in you. <laughs> that's how heavy they are. Plus, you gave me five cans, so I'm not really uh, okay. Some of us had a West Coast. Some of us had a Hazy. Mm, didn't realize that. Okay. So I'm just going to start fucking left to right. Um, so uh, I guess half of us are drinking this uh, lager. It's from Rothaus. Uh, it's a oh, it's a Rothaus Fest beer. It's a German beer from oh from town. Really Shout good. out to Fetty. Shout out to Fetty. Uh, it's a very good beer. I had this. We cracked one of these before the show, and that's a damn good lager. Um, next, we've got the Cali King, a West Coast IPA from uh, what brewing company is this? Uh, proudly created in Denver, North Carolina. What what's the what's the brewer? Royal Bliss Brewing. Oh, I've never heard of that. Royal Bliss Brewing. Okay, um, I don't think I had the West Coast um, on my flight, so I'm not there yet. Okay, so it's pretty I'm not good. Sure, if it's good or not, but I'm I'm taking it. It's good. Um, next, we have Hop Gummies. It's an IPA from Sycamore. Shocker that they made an IPA, um, <laughs> but it is very good. I did like it. What about the Tropical Stout I sta- I sent you? That Sycamore uh, is going to come out with. That black can that I sent you on Instagram? Oh, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, did I have this yet? They're coming I'm out with a tropical stout. It's a black can. It, lo- it has a fucking Jolly Roger on it. It looks pretty cool. Who is Sycamore? Yeah. Interesting. That's very. That the beer sounds interesting. I mean, I'll tropical try it. stout. I'm 100% going to try, try it. I would try it. But we'll see what um, Very good beer. I uh, had this. And again, I'm not the biggest IPA guy. Another brew um, from Sycamore. It is called Truck Bed Jacuzzi, a double IPA. Nine percent, nine point one percent alcohol. Wow! It'll get you fucked up. It'll put some hair in your peaches. It yeah, might, it might want you. Uh, you might need to buy a truck after you you drink that. Thing. That's nine point one. Yeah, yeah. nine point one. Yeah. Probably the yeah. That's up there. And this is a full can, so I'll be sipping on this a little bit more. Um, and then last but not least, from Sugar Thanks. Creek, we had it on our second official brewery episode, but we haven't had the can. We're bringing it back. Shout out to. Um, Marcus at Sugar Creek. Um, it's a juicy IPA, unlimited juice. If you go to that brewery, you have to try this. This is mm-hmm. one of the favorites. If like I would say maybe top three beers, like top three selling beers, right? Like this is it's so good. It's Has one of their best. Balance. Hell, that's why we had it on our fly, right? It's it's damn good. So um shout out to Sugar Creek. All these beers, all these brewers, good stuff. Shout out to Marcus. I've got a great buzz going. Damn. Shout out to Marcus. We love you, Marcus. <laughs> but I hope Marcus <laughs> loves us. <laughs> I, I think he does. Um, great job. <laughs> okay, great job introducing those beers. Want to transition to some pickups. Uh, and then we got one more topic after that that mm. everybody looks to uh, each week. This is my favorite so part of the show. You, guys, we, we got some, some games this week. Uh, you know, it's not the best slate of games, but we got some games that not everybody is going to be like, oh, this team is going to win. It's not going to be a clean sweep. So the first game I want to look at here is the Seahawks and the Saints. You know, Seahawks are not playing badly. I haven't seen if Jameis is going to play this week. Unfortunately, I don't have the spreads in front of me. But Seahawks and the Saints. What's what's everybody feeling? It looks like it looks like DK uh, got back into it last week, and you know Jeff Okuda from the uh, Lions was talking all that shit ahead of time. He put him in his place. He did. I, I, I have to say, I'm going to go with the, the Seahawks here. I think they're going to pull away with a win. I Daniel, good pick. <laughs> Thank you. I couldn't agree more. I think the Saints are overrated, especially their yeah, defense. Very. And I think the Seahawks are underrated, especially their offense. 
they have a ton of players right now, like rated and like so. PFF does like these grades for like yep. individual yep. players. They have like top five offensive players like in that group, so they're performing well. I don't see the Saints scoring more than seventeen points in this game, and I see the Seahawks at least scoring twenty. So that's my rationale. Seahawks. Twenty seventeen is literally a perfect ending score, and I can see that perfect. And it's Seahawks plus five and a half. So like, sign me the fuck up. Yeah, I'm 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 definitely uh, taking Seahawks. So for me, it's two things. I don't want the Saints to win, for the sole fact that Philadelphia has their first round pick, and right now it is the number three pick in the draft. Um, but I think the Saints are actually going to win this game. Um, Andy Dalton looked decent last week against the Vikings, who I think have a better defense than the Seahawks. The Saints, if they get Michael Thomas back this week and Alvin Kamara have better weapons than the Seahawks do. I'm not big on the Seahawks secondary, and I I just think people are not giving the Saints enough credit. Granted, I told you I'm not the biggest fan of the Saints. I don't, you know, I don't like their team. I think they're very, very cocky and arrogant, but I think they're a better team than the Seahawks. I'm going to take uh, the Saints. Wait, is this real quick? Was though? Michael Thomas out last week? He was. Yeah, but I also saw this week. Uh, I saw or I saw today Dennis Allen was like, uh, we'll, we'll see how they are this week. And that might, you know, I will say if they don't play, then I'll take the Seahawks. But I, I, I would say if, if Michael Thomas doesn't play, Seahawks 100%. Is, 100%. Is Marshawn Lattimore overrated? <clears throat> Possibly. I was gonna ask uh, you a question, Dan, before Florian so. went for his pick. What? What did you're saying? The Saints are being underrated. I'm not saying they're being underrated, but they looked better with Andy Dalton at the helm than they did with Jameis Winston. Gotcha. Because yeah. I was gonna ask you what you meant by like, which aspect of the team is underrated. So I hope they, they lose every with. single game going forward. Yeah, that's my goal. But you think they win this one? Yeah, and that's okay, Florian. <laughs> who you got? Um, to me, the biggest surprise two and two team this season is the Seahawks, and expect them to get there at all, especially with Geno Smith and or Drew Locke starting at quarterback. <laughs> I really like. I didn't like the expectations. I think for most people were super low. Um, th- it's not just the departure of Russell Wilson, but like a lot of pieces. No more Legion of Boom. The defense is very sus. Um, you know, I I didn't understand where the offense or, or like a total team win is going to come from, right? Bigger shocker to me in terms of a two and two team so far. Um, the thing is, it is in New Orleans, and to me, home field advantage is one of those things. It's one of the biggest X factors uh, in the game of football. It is it changes everything in my opinion. Are you looking at it right now? What time yeah. is the game? Uh, it's at a, it's a one p.m. So game. it's a one that works in the Saints' favor it, for sure. Yes. However, they are in a short week, and even if uh, Jameis Winston had a full week to prepare for a game, I still don't think he'd win it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. And, you know, I Jameis Winston's a Florida State fan. I'm a Miami, University of Miami fan. I don't root for Jameis, but I think – I always thought he was something special. However, he's proving, especially this year, he, he's just not the guy. I, I can't wait anymore, you know. I'm picking the Seahawks to win this. I think they cover with that plus five. Dope. Why are they on a short week? They played in London. Well, it's the flight back, sorry. But that does affect everything. Technically, they're on a long week. <laughs> uh, in, in a way, but I, I don't know. I think that um, that London flight has a little something Jameis, to do it, yeah. Jameis Winston needs everything going right for him to win a game, in my opinion. That's why they should start Andy Dalton. Yeah, so... Sorry. The red, I the mean, red rocket and uh, the red rifle, and <laughs> he couldn't shoot fucking water if he fell out of a boat. <laughs> I don't know, but he he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's be, what I'm trying to get at. Honestly, that'll be one of the more interesting games that I'll be interested in watching. I, I could also see it being a shootout. Yeah, I could see this being a shootout, dude. I, so you know, I want to transition the next game. Last yep. thing I want to say: Will Lutz had a 60-yard field goal and was like an inch away from a 61-yard field goal. Saw that. Well, that's that's incredible. He's that baby. was the double doink. Yeah. It was the, the double tri- doink. Yeah. Or triple doink? I love the He's double doink. Tucker. Tucker. He's baby Tucker. He's baby Tucker. Not shoot. as good, but very accurate. Um. All right, so transitioning here. This game actually, uh, it's two dumpster fires, but I think it's going to cause like a lot of discussion here. So we have the Tennessee Titans going up against the Washington 
Commanders. I would say you couldn't have picked some more trash teams than this game. There right were here. there were games. Drew and I got together and we wanted to pick games where it wasn't going to be so one sided, and we could have a debate. We were thinking about the Eagles and the Cardinals, but I can confidently say I think everybody at this table would have picked Philadelphia, the the best team in the NFL. But moving forward here. Okay. So (laughs) going towards the Titans and the Commanders, both teams are struggling. Mm -hmm. Both quarterbacks look horrendous. I mean, Carson Wentz, Washington fans, (laughs) what are we in week five? They're already calling for him to be benched. What do what yeah. do, what do we uh, uh both these teams what are they what are the records? Uh, I, think I think Washington one is and one and three and, and the Titans two and two. two and Titans two. are two so and two. Titans have beat the Raiders and have beat the Colts. Um that ain't saying much about the Colts. It ain't saying much. I think the Titans are more well coached. Um they probably have an equal quarterback and they're playing better. Commanders at home. They got a better running back. That's all I have to say. I don't really care about home and away anymore. You are the number one person for home and away advantage that I think I can name. It's Florian. I mean, if home and home and advantage is in the dictionary, Florian's name would be next to okay. it as well. Okay. You know what I liken the home field advantage to? Buying points. That's what I liken it to. You're buying points when you're at home. That's what I compare it okay. to. Okay. Fair enough. I'm picking the Titans. I pick the Titans too. I don't think it's a question. But why? why better running back? Um, they have decent wide receivers. I mean, you got Curtis Samuel that's decent on the Redskins. That's really the only guy that I like on the Redskins. You got okay running backs for the Redskins too. Yeah, the Redskins don't have a running game. Nobody looks motivated on that team, and the Titans mm-hmm. are playing better football right now. They're they're two and zero in their last two games. So yeah, if they can win another one, they have motivation to do to try and go to the playoffs and like do something with this with this year. So I'm I think not the Titans uh, should win it. I'm not high on the Titans. I'm just really low on Washington. <laughs> there you go. I'm gonna pick the Titans. Better coaching, best running back, pure running back in the game. It's just it's two shit teams playing each other. One's worse. Um, and I think the, I think Washington's worse. So. <sighs> Jesus, <laughs> I'm actually gonna take the Commanders. So m- my rationale there is, you guys say they have the best running back. That's great. Philadelphia has, I'd say, a top three, top five running game in the league. Yeah. Just rushed for 220 yards against the number one rush defense in the league. You're, you, but Washington. you're having one of the rush, best rushing quarterbacks in the league. That's why. It was all our running game. They had okay. 50 carries the entire game. But Washington held Philadelphia to, I think it was like between 60 to 65 yards. I think what Jack Del Rio is going to do is they're going to make sure they limit. They have a great defensive front. They're going to limit Derrick Henry, and they're going to say Tannehill beat us. And he's not going to be able to do that. Yeah, right. Carson Wentz is going to do just enough. Not He's not going to be great, but he's going to do just enough for them to win the game. That is my thought on that process. It's going to be close. I think it could actually realistically be a one or two point game. So it's respectable pick. That's my thoughts there. Yeah. Final game we got here. We have, which is actually going to be fun. Bengals and the Ravens, baby. That is yes, sir. We got the Bengals let me, and the Ravens. Let me go first here. I don't know really who's going to win, but I'm, I'm just choosing the Ravens because I want Lamar to win this game. I want some fucking magic to be done with Lamar. I think Lamar needs some some motivation. Give him, some, give him a W, you know. Give him a little fucking little bit of heat in his mind. I don't know. Give me something. I don't know. Give him a dub. Okay. Moving on, Florian. I'm going to pick the Ravens. They have home field advantage. Yeah. <laughs> but... Um, it's a bounce back game from another disappointing. I mean, they're zero and two against the AFC East right now. Think about that. Um, and against two real, the two best teams in that division, uh, and they were close. You know, like with the Dolphins, they lost in the fourth quarter, but they had that big lead. Um, and against the Bills, you know, it got away with it got away from them again. No, yeah. Um, two big teams. The Bengals are a big team. They're defending AFC champs. They're division rivals. They're going to bounce back. They're going to beat big team. And I think the Bengals are the first one they're going to beat. 
I agree because of that. I think a big identity is like winning close games, and the Ravens have yet to prove that. And the Bengals, you know, yeah, they don't have as many wins as they should because close game against the Steelers, yep. right? And they stomped the Dolphins. Well, I wouldn't say stomped. That's not fair. Um, beat yeah. them handedly after Tua went out. Yeah, big um, caveat. Mind big you. caveat. And then they, you know, the bounce back game, what they have against the Jets a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they destroyed them. Um, so uh, that's not saying much, but what I'm saying is they're getting their stride after being 0 2, right? Remember, everybody was like, rah, rah, rah. now they're 2 and 2. Um, yeah. Lamar hasn't proven this year that he can win a close game. So I'm going to take the bang. They have the Ravens have the hardest schedule, I think, in the, in, yeah. in the conference. I think in any conference. You know? uh, Dolphins have a hard schedule. Of our own, I don't know. It, our stacks up pretty good against them, in my opinion. What you got, Dan? I'm kind of like. It's I'm hard. This is the here. hardest one. Basically, so what I've seen from the Ravens the last couple weeks, they can't close games. They have arguably one of the best quarterbacks in the league and M- that leading MVP candidate, if you ask me. Uh, no. Not even close. Uh, Patrick end. Mahomes. No, he said best tight end. I mean, that's just f- so far from the truth. He's number one in fantasy right now. Okay. Moving forward here. Um, you know, I, it just seems like they are finding different ways to lose. All they needed to do last week was kick a field goal. And I get they might not have won, but they would have at least gone into overtime. The Dolphins, they let turn the ball over with a concussion – Back into the game. I think the Bengals might be finding their stride. You know, they're, they're mixing in Joe Mixon. T. Higgins looks unstoppable. And the minute that they start going to T. Higgins, Jamar Chase is wide open. Joe Burrow's getting a little... He's not getting a lot of time. He's getting a little more time in the pocket. Mm-hmm. Give me the Bengals. It's not going to be much. I think it might be a field goal. Um, but, but give me the Bengals. And the division games, too. I don't know if you guys know this. Division games, you can throw records out. Throw records out. The division games always play hard unless you're in the AFC East. Um, <laughs> so oh, that's shame. you know I, that that's some good picks there. I think those games are going to be very very interesting. Um, I want to throw it to Daniel. Uh, you know for our you know it's time. Oh, you know what time it is? What it's time is it? Daniel's a doofus. Okay, well, and t- we are a little bit uh yeah. We are a little bit on a downer. We're, and I, we're I thought I washed the, the stank off me last time. You didn't, but though. I didn't. I didn't. I really, I washed myself good. Every crevice, I cleaned that thing nice. And I mean, I the couldn't thing? be anymore. I couldn't be so anymore. So what are we clean. on the year? One and three? We are one and three. It's okay. Very, it's sad. Told, it's you not can, to, told you not to pick the lines. I can, that's all I'm going to say. It's yeah. like our fantasy. And team. I but told I do, you to pick the Raiders, and I told you to take right. Patriots plus. You're right. 15 and a half. And you know what we're doing? You know what? We're digging deep, and we're going to start really, really analyzing. Excuse me. Sure. And we're going to analyze these uh, these games a little bit more in depth, okay? I think that the Swift and Amon Ra being out in my pick was the game factor for them not to, to lose. I think that they those are two key players they, they needed. And, and They still put up we, like 40 something. We as a podcast have to identify those things in advance. I, I agree. I agree. But I, we didn't. Yep. Yeah, you're right. You're right. We didn't know they were going to so be out or not. Fault. We, you're, you're right. We didn't know we, they were going to be out or not. But but you know what? We, we knew that there was a chance. So. Then what this what is, week? What is the this, pick week, this week? This week we've got a couple games to talk about. We've got Miami Dolphins minus three point five versus Jets plus three point five. I mean, I think that's a no brainer. I think that's a hundred percent. All of us can just bang it out without even discussing yeah. about it. But before we discuss it, I want to don't want to take it to the other the two games where we're talking about it. Rams minus four versus Cowboys plus four and. 49ers minus 6.5 versus Panthers plus 6.5. I don't see the Panthers scoring much at all against the 49ers. I agree. And I just that then, defense is going to eat him alive. And then you mentioned the Cowboys. I think this is a good bounce back game for the Rams. Kind of like how when the Chargers lost the Jags a mm. few weeks ago. And plus, hope, it is a I home. I hope so. I hope it's, it's a, a bounce back game. Yep. Yep. Um, but. I do think that the the two games out of those are the 49ers and Panthers and the Miami Dolphins and the Jets to to uh, to bet on between these three. I think that the the Rams and the the Cowboys 
I don't I don't think that the the Cowboys are gonna win, but I, I just think that the other two two games are better to bet so, on. So first off, three and a half is my least favorite line to bet. Yeah, didn't you buy points? So I yes, I did. I bought one point. I did. I did buy one point. We went from three point uh we uh, if I chose, which I am, I'm choosing the Dolphins, minus three point five, but I am buying a point to to do minus two point five. Then I like that. Okay. Yeah, yes. I mean I, I, I think that's you know it, People are hyping the Jets fans and the media are hyping up Zach Wilson. He did not look good last week. I, I don't want to hear that. He had one drive in the fourth quarter. Great job. The rest of the game looked like garbage. Right. I don't. I don't want to hear that. I agree. I feel like this is a bait spread. You know, people are underestimating Bridgewater. Dolphins still have a good team, and then overestimating the Jets mm-hmm. because. They won last week. If this game was played week one, it'd be Dolphins minus six. So yeah. we're getting three free points here. Yeah. Yep. I agree. And I do agree. Minus three point five is a terrible line. I don't I, like I, it. I don't like that. Because yeah, like last week I bit Bills minus three. Uh-huh. And that saved me. I pushed, right? Uh-huh. I didn't lose money money didn't win because they it's a three point. When you three point five, you set yourself up for those field goal losses. Yeah. You it have stings. to buy a point. You have never, to buy a point. I yeah. never do three point five. Right, I agree. You have to buy the point and or don't I w- do it. I will say, Mike McDaniel now has a whole week to prepare the offense and cater it to Teddy Bridgewater. Oh, more strengths. than a week, y'all played on Thursday. Oh, well, more than a week, exactly. Yeah, so I, I agree. I mean, I would pick the Dolphins in this game too, even though it is in New York at MetLife. I still now. Here's the question: Do we cho- do we like the Miami Dolphin game more than the 49er game versus the Panthers? Of course, slightly. Jesus. I I love the Dolphins one. I really like the 49ers one. I I can agree with Drew. Well, right so there. you're picking 49ers? Uh, no, no, you're picking the Dolphins. You love the Dolphins. No, you I'm like saying them. in that game, you're or you're picking the. Are oh, you picking the Panthers at no, plus no, whatever no, no, it is? No, 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 no. no. Panther or Forty Nine ers minus six and a half. Oh, okay. We this is one of those weeks, as I said to you guys. Football always is weird. This is one of those weeks where, for whatever reason, not Baker Mayfield, but it's going to be their defense as well as Christian McCaffrey. That is, they might not win, but six and a half is a lot, dude. A lot. Yeah, I don't like the it is. It's how a much lot. how many points it is. So I, you know what, I think that I think. To what we have to say is, I think that the so dolphin, the dolphin game is the choice. Yeah, I think we've concluded that real quick. So, dolphins minus two and a half. Mine- how much are you putting down? We'll put a nice three hundred dollar down again. Okay, so three hundred dollars. So, as you guys heard, Daniel's a doofus this week. Is the dolphins minus two and a half over the Jets? So make sure you know you guys tune into that game and see. Hopefully, we get back onto the winning streak. You know, we got to get on that. Last year was so great. Um, but before we get out of here, we don't get to do it at breweries. I want to make it quick here. Talk to me about a good thing of the week from you guys. I, I love doing it. Florian, I'm going to throw it to you. It's rapid fire. Not long. Very quick. Um, Daniel and I are doing or going to a trade show uh, Thursday evening cool. um, for our company. Pool industry trade show. First time in Charlotte. It's usually in Vegas. So it's big for us. Big networking opportunity. Hell yeah. Yep, good thing of the week is that, and I we also get to do a uh, piping job that we're gonna, you know, do. We're practic- pipe it up, yeah. We're practicing our piping, you know. We can pipe that shit up all day. Yeah. So if you have a pool in the greater Charlotte area, which includes Rock Hill, and you need us to fix your pipes, we will. <laughs> yes, sir. We got some good pipes. Jerski, I killed three ant colonies outside my house. So, wow, that's uh, a win. So. Your okay. big thing of the week is genocide. Gotcha. Essentially. Mm. Damn. Ants will no longer be welcomed in this house. Uh, just two quick things. Um, Philadelphia is the best NFL uh, team right now, which I love. Uh, and then going to Connecticut this weekend for Corgan's wedding. So I'm actually really excited for that. Hey, uh, Cor- I feel like he just got engaged and he's already getting married. He's been, en- he's been engaged for a year, I think. Oh, wow. Maybe okay. longer. I don't know, but I'm excited Never for mind. that. Going to get some Where good pizza, I? hang out with the boys, get some food, oh. et cetera, et cetera. But Ladies and gentlemen, this gentleman here gets to go to Frank Pepe's Frank on Wooster Street in New Haven, Connecticut. Whoa. And I'm jealous. Mm-hmm. I'm absolutely jealous. I'm quite excited. But, gentlemen, sadly, it's time to get out of here. It is. It's the worst part of my week is whenever we have to get out of here. But I always enjoy doing this with you guys on yep. a week-to-week basis. I love it. You know, 44 weeks. 44 weeks. So make sure 
You guys, give this a listen. This will be uploaded Friday. Give us a comment, like, subscribe. What do you guys want us to have our, you know, ranking and our draft at next week? And maybe some games you guys see that you want us to discuss. You know, we'd love to hear from everybody. Make sure you look at us on Apple, Spotify, Google Play. We're on Twitter. Uh, we don't have Facebook. We're on TikTok. Maybe MySpace. I don't know. We're, we're going to look into that. Um, yeah, even even you people out here who know us personally have yeah. our numbers. Like, feel free to feel text free. us about what you want us to talk about, mm-hmm. right? It's critical interaction. We're here for it, all about it. We want it. So, thank you. And I'm curious who had the best top four hip-hop How slash was rappers wasn't you, of dude. all time. Game over. <laughs> I think I... Dan, Dan yours is pretty so. good till you put Meek Mill in there. I love Meek. Um, <laughs> but this has been episode 44 of the Flights of the Round Table podcast. Hope everyone has a wonderful day, wonderful week, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Uh-huh.